Hello all, welcome to another video of Components 101. In this video, I will show you how you can use the famous display driver IC LM3915. So as you can see, I have the simulation circuit over here using which I will show the working of this IC. So this IC can uh, is a display driver IC as I told you earlier and it can control up to 10 LEDs based on an input signal given to pin number 5. So normally for this IC, the input signal will be an audio signal. So based on the amplitude of the audio signal, the number of LEDs will light up, which I will show you shortly. And it's commonly used in audio visualization applications. So similar to this LM3915 IC, there is another IC called the LM3914. Let's take a look at it. We have already discussed about this IC, the LM3914 on our website. So let's quickly get into the simulation of that as well. That should be somewhere in the bottom. Let's see. Yeah, here is the simulation thing. So as you can see, it looks very similar except for a few things. This IC is a linear uh, display driver IC, meaning it is uh, the LEDs will get incremented linearly with linearly with respect to the input voltage. So as you can see, as the input voltage is changed over here, the LEDs increment. But here, the LM 3915 is a logarithmic display driver IC that is it is not directly proportional to the value of the analog input voltage which we give to pin number 5 but it is logarithmically proportional. I can show you that using the simulation so before we get into the simulation let's check how the device is connected how the IC is connected so as you can see the IC is powered by 9 volts and i am using a 3.6 volt as the maximum amplitude of my audio signal this can vary between 1.2 volts to 16 volts if i remember it correctly but now i am using only 3.6 volts and the pin number 7 pin number 6 and pin number 4 are used to set the reference voltages so RL0 is the minimum voltage which you would give to the signal pin which in my case will be 0 volts so I have connected it to the ground. RHI will be the maximum voltage which I will be giving to the signal volt, signal pin which would be 3.6 volts and it will also be the reference voltage so VRO is the reference voltage of the IC so in most cases the reference voltage will be equal to RHI so we just connect both of those pins together and here there is something important the resistors R1 and R2 play a very important role in deciding the reference voltage and the current that passes through each LED over here. So for the purpose of understanding I have kept both R1 and R2 as 1K and there are two formulas to calculate the reference voltage and the current that will pass through each LED which I will show you shortly and uh, pin number 9 here is used to set the mode so this IC can work both for controlling a 10 segment uh, LED or a dot matrix LED so you can select the mode based on uh, pin number 9 so if you make it high it will be dot matrix if you leave it low sorry if you make it high it will be a 7 seg 10 segment display and if you make it low it will be a dot matrix display so that's it for the explanation let's go ahead and click the play button and here we go now since it is 100% all the LEDs are off let's vary it and as I vary you can see the LEDs getting incremented so this is the dot matrix fashion so for the maximum thing we have reached 2 if you can take a look the variation is not linear to the change in analog input voltage so uh, as i told you earlier it's a logarithmic response so for initially the changes will be very fast then as i go high the changes will happen slowly because it is a logarithmic response whereas for the lm3914 it is a linear response so this would be the dot matrix type let's change the mode making the pin number 9 high so now you can see the response rate is same but the LEDs like they get incremented and the previous one still remains on so this would be the difference between a 7 segment sorry a 10 segment LED and a dot matrix LED so that's how the IC works now there is only one more thing left to check it out that is how R1 and R2 should be used to set the reference voltage so here we have 1k and 1k 
for R1 and R2 for the purpose of understanding. Let's get into the data sheet over here and scroll. Okay, another important feature is the increment happens for every 3 dB per step. That is, the LED increments by one step for every 3 dB in your audio signal. So, for every 3 dB, one LED will increment and thus for 10 LEDs, you can get a range of 30 dB. Obviously, you can cascade more than one IC and you can get a range of up to 90 dB as well by cascading three ICs of the same type. Now, let's go down and check the application circuit. All of this is again explained in the website as well. The link for the same can be found at the description given in the video. So, here we have the same circuit which has R1 and R2 and we have two formulas over here which will calculate the reference voltage and the uh, current that passes through the LED. So your reference voltage should always be equal to the maximum analog input voltage of the audio signal that is go that you're going to give to this pin number 5. So here my mine would be 3.6. So let's see how it works. So for in my case it was 1 uh, on both the sides. So R1 and R2 will be 1 which is again 1. 1 plus 1 is equal to 2. So this would be 2.4 and again we'll have 3.4 or somewhere around 3.6 volts will be my reference voltage. So I have kept 3.6 volts and the current that would pass through will always will can also be calculated using this formula over here. So you have to choose the value of R1 and R2 using these two formulas and make sure you can allow the required amount of current to each LED as well as your reference voltage is almost equal to the maximum voltage that you would give to pin number 5. So that's it guys, that's pretty much it. If you have any doubt, you can uh, get into the website and leave your comments over there and I'll try helping you out. Hope you understood the working of this IC and uh, you would be confident in using them in your projects. Okay, thank you.